videos that we're releasing. That was one of what will be several videos. Did you guys enjoy it? Yeah, cool. We like doing like these like hip hop kind of entrepreneur motivational videos. Break them into little mini movies as well. This one was all about the story of entrepreneurship about a couple of struggling entrepreneurs. They were living the life, but then it wasn't always that easy. They were struggling. They went and sought out mentorship from Jim Piccolo at Techademics and went and got the wisdom to be able to put them on track and that's how they got where they are. Um, lots of cool ideas. We got a lot of stuff going. So I'm excited. Anyways, that was a quick little random debut. Uh, that's not even the final version. So uh, don't worry about posting that one today after I get off stage or whatever. We have a, a much more updated version. I'm going to launch that on YouTube. It'll be on YouTube all weekend. Would love your sharing of it, you know, commenting of it. We're going to have some challenges where um, we're going to allow people to comment on the video, share the video, and write blog posts about it, and have like a little contest, if you will. So uh, who enjoyed my Facebook Ads 101 talk that I gave a couple days ago? Was that helpful? Okay. Even at a beginner level, was it pretty helpful? Okay. I would like to continue that talk. I would love to literally continue where we left off and get more into Facebook advertising and really just kind of dive in. I'm just going to dive into one of my testing accounts again and actually place ads with you live on the spot. So um, what I'm going to do, Pat, is I'm going to assume that it's it just that you just pushed it live. If it's not pushed live, let me know. If so, can you guys verify in the audience? Can you see it? Yes, sir. Okay. That's enough verification. So do you mind if uh, we skip the hype and just jump right in and start training? Okay. Or do you want me to get up here and rap Life of an Entrepreneur? <laughs> You're like, yeah, do that. Both. Okay. Where we last left off in my beginning talk was Facebook Advertising 101. I shared with you what Facebook ads are, why they're so important, how to be able to research and find out how people are targeting you. Um, then we went into a thorough overview of Facebook Ads Manager. What are all the terms? What are all the features that are available to you? We dove in and we took a look at it. We began to place an ad. And that was where we last left off. I began to kind of place an ad and then we, we ended that session. So that's where I'm going to pick up. In today's session, I'm going to start by placing uh, an ad on the spot right from that section and then we're going to place a whole bunch of ads and I'm going to teach you a very cool organizational structure I have to place ads and to scale them out. Now, this is going to be a very beginner level because we have other people like Nicholas Kuzmich, who's actually here in the building with us today. These guys do millions of dollars in advertising, okay? They're experts at their craft. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that there's nobody left behind. I'm going to make sure everybody has a basic understanding. So, with that being said, let's dive in and begin where we left off, which was placing an ad on Facebook. So let's go ahead and share my screen. By now you should be this far along where you've set up an ads account with Facebook and you've come to this screen here which is the place an ad screen. It is the most basic screen. You just click the big green button to place an ad and you end up here. We discussed how on the left side there are three different sections. You have the campaign which is what objective you're trying to get. Then you're going to have your ad set. You're going to decide who's the audience you're trying to reach, um, where would you like your ads to be shown, and how much money do you want to spend on them. And then the third section is going to be you designing the ad. What do you want the ad to look like? What do you want it to say? So first things first, you cannot go on without choosing an objective. So the simplest objective to get started with that I recommend for beginners is going to be the engagement objective, the one that's called engagement. You're going to click on that. Start here because it's the easiest one to get basic results with. Are you going to sell out, you know, hundreds of products with this? Probably not. Are you going to start to see likes, shares, comments, views? Yes. You're going to get immediate feedback from this ad type. So the ad objective we're going to choose is engagement. Now, first things first is the campaign name. For campaign name, I like to come up with a very simple way that if I'm looking at a hundred campaigns, how do I know the difference between these ads? So I, kind of, I look for a very simple approach to naming my campaigns. Once you're advanced, you're going to come up with your own strategy. So just, let, just start with what I share with you. As soon as you're placing dozens of these, you're going to come up with your own whole way to do it. What I'll do with campaign name is the very first thing I want to look at is 
what post am I advertising it? Let's say that there, we just played that video right there. The life of an entrepreneur rap video. If I'm going to do, if, if my objective is to get video views to that video, then I'm going to name the campaign something with life of entrepreneur. So life of an entrepreneur, for short, I'm going to call it LOE. So I'm going to type in LOE, which to me reminds me life of an entrepreneur, and then I'm going to do video. LOE video. The next thing um, I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dash, and then I'm going to put something about who's the audience. What's something about the audience or the objective I'm trying to reach? So LOE video, which means life of an entrepreneur video. On this one, I'm going to target, let's say, influencers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, if you like um, Grant Cardone or Gary Vaynerchuk or Mark Cuban or whoever, some influential people, if you like them, they're business entrepreneur people, then you might like the life of an entrepreneur video. So I'm going to say LO video, LOE video, dash, let's say influencers. Now, there's a lot of influencers, so I might even make this a little bit more specific. Let's say instead of just influencers, let's say modern influencers. You know, modern, so LOE video is what I'm advertising, and then modern influencers is going to be the group that I'm going to target. I'm going to choose post engagement. I could choose page likes or event responses, but just don't. Those don't work very well. Just do pay, post engagement. Now, the type of ad we're placing, in case anybody here is confused whatsoever, is called a PPE ad. Page post engagement. If you ever hear the term PPE, that is the type of ad that we are placing. Let's press continue. Now we are on this second block on the left over here called ad set. We've chosen the objective, that's done. We can go back and change it if we want. But now we're going to choose the audience, who's going to see it, placements, where is it going to be seen, and budget and schedule. How much money do we want to spend? So let's just kind of go through. Let's have some fun with this. Now on the top, you'll see create a new audience or use a saved audience. We're going to start from scratch. If you take a lot of time and energy to really think of really good terms, you can save that and you can use it again later. Okay, so locations. What we're going to do is we're going to want to target people in certain cities, states, countries, regions, internationally, you name it. Now, here is the thought process. If you are just looking to get engagement and you don't even care, you just want to get likes, shares, comments, views, whatever, then you can choose the worldwide location. All you do is go in here and type worldwide. You type it. And then it's going to bring up a bunch of places. You're looking for the one on the top that says worldwide region. That is going to target all worldwide. If you notice, my audience size over here on the right is 1.8 billion people. This ad will reach 1.8 billion people. That is too much, obviously. But when would you want to use worldwide and when would you not? Well, the question is, for this content, for this life of an entrepreneur video, do I just want views for the sake of views? If you don't want views for the sake of views, then you're probably going to want to target an audience. Now, there will be some times you do want views for the sake of views. For example, maybe the first 100,000 views I want on this video, I just want cheap views, get them out of the way. What I'll do is I'll target worldwide until I get 100,000 views on my video. After which, I'll change it to just United States or whatever my market is. That's a way to be able to get inexpensive views to your video first and then you could always change it out later. It's a technique. There will be a time and place when it makes sense to advertise worldwide. The general consensus that I'm looking for is that I want buyers. I want people to buy whatever it is I'm selling. I want to build a list of potential buyers. So for me, I would prefer to target the United States no matter what. So I'll type in United States. It's going to auto-populate, and I'm going to choose the one that is the country. Then I'm also going to choose Canada. Canada is an essentially an extension of the United States to me. It's essentially the same audience. You know what? Australia is essentially an extension as well as New Zealand. They are different countries, but yet English speaking, credit card holding uh, population there. Now, I've also found a lot of success with United Kingdom. And as I start typing in, it populates. These are called my big five. My big five is United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, United Kingdom. You'll notice instead of 1.8 billion people that I am now reaching 296 million people. Significantly less, but still huge. So 
What I'm looking to do is I'm looking to bring that audience size down and I want to advertise this video. So what can I do? Remember, I'm, I'm looking to, if you guys remember my training from the first time around, I'm looking to get, if I'm trying to get video views, I'm looking for an audience between 1 million and 10 million reach right here. 1 to 10 million. If I'm trying to sell something, I'll generally go down to 200,000 to 800,000. That was in my training previously, part one. So I have this number of 296 million people. My objective is to get video views to that video I just showed you. So therefore, I'm going to want to get this to 1 to 10 million. But I still want it to be targeted. So I got to ask myself, age. For the sake of right now getting video views, it's a brand new video. I don't mind any age coming to watch it. But later on, I'm probably going to want to change this to 21 and over. Now, if my video has any sort of graphic violence, if it was a boxing video, a UFC video, if it was some type of you know, martial arts video, whatever, then I'm probably going to want to do 21 and over. I don't want to take any chances showing my content to underage people. In this case, it doesn't matter at all. Um, in fact, I could even lower this one to 15, 16. Wouldn't matter at all. And look, that just bumped up to 303 million people. Okay, gender, you know, if I'm going to scale out campaigns, I might, all this is important. But what I'm doing is I'm creating a template. Okay, let's, let's talk about this for a second. The very first ad that I want to place is a $5 per day page post engagement ad. I call this the master template. That's what this is called. I want to place one ad that is the master, and then when I want to scale this campaign, I want to duplicate this ad over and over and over and over. So I want to have one master, one that looks really good. I'm going to spend my time getting the one right, and then I can duplicate it a bunch of times and change the audience. So what I'm building here is I'm building a master template. So on your master, you want to go broad. You want to go broad, and you want to get all your numbers as close as possible for all your ads. So what I'm doing broad is I'm going big five countries, age 16 to 65 plus, all men, all women, and then I need something in here, detailed targeting. I need to put something in to lower that potential reach from 300 million down to 1 to 10 million. So, remember I said modern influencers. Now you'll notice I have some of these showing up in my search results because I just searched for them recently. What I'll do is I'll type in one modern influencer to start with. Let's type in one. Let's type in Gary Vaynerchuk, an online modern influencer. You'll notice his reach is 24 million people. Him alone, if I don't add anybody else, he has enough reach for people that are talking about him, following him, pages related to him, and everything, that it's a pretty good size audience. Now, I can run an ad right now to just Gary Vaynerchuk, and it likely will work. That is a large enough audience. Or I can narrow it down a little bit if I want. So what I'm going to do in this example is we're just going to stick with Gary Vaynerchuk. 24 million people. So. There's a big enough reach here where I'm going to place an ad to. What I'm telling Facebook is, if somebody likes Gary Vaynerchuk, can you show my video to them? Now, before we go further, let's look at this guy, Gary Vaynerchuk. And let's throw, I can't assume you all know who this person is. Gary Vaynerchuk. He is a modern day influencer. Here he is right there. Let's go, let me move this. And let's go look at, let's look at, try to find a fan page of his. Okay, here he is. Look. Entrepreneur, 1.8 million fans on his fan page alone, not including all the people talking about him all the time. So he's got book pages, he's got quotes. This guy is an entrepreneur. He travels around the world doing public speaking. He has a good following. People that follow Gary Vaynerchuk would likely be interested in entrepreneur-related terms. So you just watched that entrepreneur rap video, right? Is that a video that entrepreneurs might like? Absolutely. So I think fans of Gary Vaynerchuk would like that video. That's why I went down here and chose Gary Vaynerchuk. So we're going to start with Gary, just Gary. It's a little bit outside of 10 million, but I don't, I don't mind. Okay, so there we have five countries, all ages, all genders, that like Gary Vaynerchuk. 
I can, if I wanted to save this audience, I could save it right here. I could save it, and it will bring up all this, and then I'll just save it as, I'll do um, influencers dash Gary Vaynerchuk. That tells me what category he's in. I might do authors, speakers, whatever, slash Gary Vaynerchuk. And then it shows me. There's all the people. Let's save it. Okay. Now, after I've done that, the next section here is placements. They have two options, automatic placements, which is recommended, or edit placements. Let's click on edit placements. And these little arrows mean that you can expand. So let's expand all of these. Okay, here's your options of where you can show an ad. All devices, or you can target mobile only or desktop only. For the sake of this master template, we're going to keep it broad. We're going to do all devices. Later on, we might run one to just desktop and one to mobile. That is called a split test. You take a single ad and you say, I'm going to run $5 a day to mobile and I'm going to do the same exact ad, run $5 a day to desktop. That is called a split test. I want to split it in two and see which converts better, mobile or desktop. And you might be surprised. I've had ads where desktop converts three times better than mobile and I've had ads where mobile converts as much as 10 times better than desktop. There really is uh, so many variables that go into advertising, you'll ne there will never be one way to do it. That's why we are taught to split test. I'll run one master template, and if it's going well, I'll break it in so I have one going to mobile and one going to desktop. Okay, next you have platforms. Where do you want this to show? You'll see that sometimes it's eligible for things, sometimes it's ineligible. So you'll see here I have Instagram. Do I want this video to show on Instagram or not? Now, what I like to do, this is what I personally like to do, I like to run my ads one place at a time. So if I'm going to run my ad to Instagram, I'm only going to run it to Instagram. If I'm going to run my ad to the Facebook newsfeed, I'm only going to run it to the Facebook newsfeed. Personally, I don't like to run my ad and just blast it everywhere. If I choose everything, I'm telling Facebook, yeah, just put it everywhere and see what works. In theory, Facebook's going to figure out which is best. But in practicality, really what's going to happen is Facebook is going to throw it everywhere and then just choose one place and give that the most attention. I would rather run an, this same video to somebody on the Facebook news feed. I'd rather run it to somebody on the right side ad. I'd rather run it to somebody over here on Instagram. I'd rather run it different times. That way I have the clear data. I personally don't like giving Facebook the choice of where to show it. I'd rather choose, show it on Instagram, only on Instagram, and let me see how well that performs. Let me judge for myself the results. So that's what I like to do. Place it, because only for the price of a cup of coffee, literally, this cup of coffee, um, if you were to go to like Starbucks or Dutch Bros, something like that, it's like three to five dollars for a coffee these days, right? For the same price you're paying for a cup of coffee, you can test a Facebook ad and see if it converts or not. So I, I prefer just to spend my money testing. Um, so, my methodology is I uncheck all this stuff. I'm going to uncheck everything. My master template ad is just going to go to the Facebook newsfeed. That's it. Uncheck, 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 uncheck. There it is. I'm only in the Facebook newsfeeds. Right there. It won't let me uncheck that because at least one place is, is required. Now, I do leave it on all devices. I still will let Facebook, show it to mobile, desktop, I don't care about that. I'm just going to do all devices right here, Facebook newsfeed, okay? So all you do, I just, when I chose all devices again, it added all these back. I'm going to uncheck them real quick. Uncheck, 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 uncheck. So there it is. This ad will just be shown in the Facebook newsfeed. Now, once I did that, when I changed all these settings, did you guys notice something happened over here to the potential reach? Yeah. Potential reach went down to 1.5 million because now I've narrowed it down to just the Facebook newsfeed. That helps me. Now I got to ask myself, do I want to continue to just have this be 1.5 million and do a Gary Vaynerchuk audience? Or do I want to maybe add some more people? Let's add some more people. Let's do, Grant, let's do Grant Cardone, another entrepreneur that's in that space, right? Now I'm at 1.8 million. I can go as high as 10 million, no problem. So after you've added a couple of interests, you can just put your mouse here and Facebook will start suggesting related interest to you. So they're suggesting this guy named Tim Ferriss. If you don't know who the person is, we got Google for that. Tim Ferriss. 
Let's look him up. So here's this guy, Tim Ferriss Show, the blog, the author, some pictures of him. So here's this guy who is best of 2016 on iTunes, the Tim Ferriss Show. You start looking at his topics, how to 10x your results, um, you know, entrepreneurship topics, mindset, personal development. Yes, this person fits marketing, mindset, uh, investing. This person also fits the theme I'm looking for, which are, would his audience be interested in the content I'm advertising? In this case, an entrepreneur video. What do you think? Would Tim Ferriss' audience be interested in an entrepreneur video? Absolutely. It's worth a shot. I'm at least willing to try $5 on it. In fact, when I tried to leave, he said, how to 10x your per hour output. That sounds like it's tailored to entrepreneurs. So even if you don't know the words they're suggesting, you're one Google search away. So I've identified, yes, Tim Ferriss would also be a good addition. Now, let's scroll up and see where I'm at. I'm at 2.2 million. Remember, if I'm trying to get video views and big engagement, I can go 1 to 10 million, no problem. So I'm going to keep adding. I'm going to go higher. Click in here. Ty Lopez, Ryan Dice, Frank Kern, uh, Marie Forleo, Amy Porterfield, Mike Diller. It's just getting suggested to me. Onyx and Gall. You start adding some people, you scroll up, I'm at 3.4 million, okay? I can go even more. Let's keep adding. Jeff Walker, Andy Jenkins, Armin Marin, Evan Pagan, Perry Belcher. And if you don't know who the people are, you got Google, okay? Let's go back up. I'm at 3.6 million. Let's go Lewis House, Rory Smith, Jonathan Budd, Diane Hockman, Brian Finale, Rachel Jackson. You can start going up. I'm, at, I'm at still at 3.8 million. So what, the reason it's not going up is because... It's two things are happening. I'm adding a lot of people that are either not very popular in, in relevance to the first people I added, or their audiences are a crossover audience, meaning the kind of people who are interested in Grant Cardone are also interested in Ryan Dice. There's not much, there's a lot of crossover. So let's go down here and let's look for some big names. Here is how to find some big names. Do everything the same. When you hover over, see how this says 330,000 people? But see, Mark Hoverson says 2,690. What you're going to look for is you're going to look for some people who have big names, potentially in the millions. So I'll scroll down. See, I was adding, if I had Mark, it's not going to change that. It's still going to be 3.8 million. You're barely going to move the needle. If I had Danny, maybe it'll move the ne needle a little bit to 4 million because she had 300,000 followers, right? If I add Susan Sly, 32,000, probably won't move the needle at all. Yep, I'm still at 4 million, right? Now, that doesn't mean it's not good to advertise to her. Her followers are also entrepreneurs. I'll bundle them in, right? I'm going to do a big bundled audience. And what's cool is that I'm getting people that are loyal. But I need something to move that needle from 4 million to 10 million to big, big, build a big audience. So I'm going to sit here and I'm going to hover over these names until I find these people in the hundreds of thousands or in the millions. So I'm at 4 million now. Let's add Matt Morris. Let's see if we can get somebody else in the hundreds of thousands. Okay, let's see. Sarah Robbins, let's see, Ray Higdon, let's go down. And if I don't, I'll show you a little technique to get right back to it. Okay? All these savvy network marketing women, that's kind of like a group. See, I'm looking, I'm hovering over, and I'm seeing it. No one really is jumping up too much. So here's a technique. What's happened is that Google's suggestions will only take you so far. I need to go and give Google a little bit more feedback as to what I'm looking for. I started with big entrepreneurs with huge followings that were authors and speakers and everything. And then I drifted and it looks like it's taken me into network marketers, multi-level marketers. It took me that direction. Now they're smaller. I want to get back to these big followings. So I've got to name a person. I've got to put in a person on this list that I haven't already named. Somebody name me a big, a big person that's not on this list. Let's go. Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. Let's see if it moved it up from 4 million. Boom, 5.8 million. Do you see how he moved the envelope? You see how he moved the needle there a little bit? Now, it might start recommending me people, but I still see a bunch of network marketers, so it still is not enough. It needs more than that to be able to, uh, to, be able to pull it in there. So who's another, who's another big influencer? Chris Rackard. Chris Rackard. <laughs> Who besides me is a big influencer? Who? Who? Who's a big, like has millions of followers? Well, I'll try Russell Brunson. I don't think Russell Brunson will move the needle much, but... 
Oh, he was already up there. I've already got him in. Brendan Bouchard. Do I have it right? Brendan Bouchard. There, now you're starting to get better. Six million, now you're starting to get better. Mark Cuban. See, two million there. You're starting to get better. Branson. Robert Kiyosaki. Now you're starting to think more. So let's go, let's see how we're at so far. 8.7 million. See how we just quickly move the needle up? This is the key. What I'm teaching you is that when you're creating an ad, it's all about finding the right audience. I don't know that these are the right audience, but here's what I like to do. I can put together a big group of influencers and then I can advertise to this big group for $5 a day and get a low cost per engagement. If the ad is producing very well, I can break it apart. I could do one ad, $5 a day, just to fans of Ty Lopez. Another ad, just fans of Gary Vaynerchuk. Another ad, just fans of Grant Cardone. I can single out some of these people who maybe have only a, a million when I put them in. And if those are going well, I'm even more targeted. So you start broad, you find to see if this big broad audience is converting, and then you can go narrow once you have data. We'll leave it there. 8.7 million is plenty. Okay. I've got an audience between 1 to 10 million. My goal of this is cheap cost per engagement. This is not an audience that will convert well. 8.7 million people is way too big to just convert. You know, this not laser targeted at all. It's very broad. These are people that follow other entrepreneurs. Okay, so I'm going to go and I'm going to update this. Okay, I've updated the saved audience. Actually, I'm going to update it again really quick. Instead of naming it uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, I'm going to name it Modern Influencers, and then I might even put the reach, 8.7 million. Modern Influencers, 8.7 million, save that list. The reason I put the, put the reach is because I want to, like, at a glance, be able to look at this and see it. Okay. Let's keep moving. My edit my placements. It's only showing the Facebook newsfeed. Now, let's get down here to budget. How much should you spend? For budget, we have the option here to do a daily budget or a lifetime budget. Again, I want to make sure there's a disclaimer out here. I'm not showing you the one way to do Facebook ads. This is not the ultimate, do it this way and you will succeed. Facebook advertising is more masterful. If you are trying to teach somebody how to paint, you need to let them be creative and paint what's in their mind. But you can teach them how to blend colors together. You can teach them the different types of sizes of paint brushes. And you can teach them varieties of canvas that they can use. But you can't, you, you, you can't get in the way of their own creativity and what's possible inside their mind. I'm not looking to tell you exactly what to do as a cookie cutter. I'm just trying to guide you so you get better with Facebook advertising and you can do this yourself. As a basic guide to get started, follow this for your first few ads to get a little bit of experience and then move on. For your first few ads, do a daily budget, not a lifetime budget, of $5 per day. Daily budget, $5 per day. For schedule, have it run continuously starting today. It says you'll spend no more than $35 per week. Don't worry, you don't have to spend $35. You can pause this ad tomorrow, the next day, the next day. You can pause it in an hour if you want. The point is, start small. The reason you do this small when you're a beginner is because otherwise you can spend a whole lot of money real fast and not get any results. You want to, you want to ask me how I know that? I was a beginner. And I, I started by spending $100 a day, and I had 10 ads, 5 ads running. I can't remember how many ads running. Very quickly, it was like four days later, I'm, I'm out $2,000, and I got no results. So... Don't go through the same pain and mistakes I went through. At $5 a day, you can mess up pretty bad, and it's not that bad. It's like going to Starbucks, buying a coffee, getting all excited, and leaving it on the hood of your car when you drive off. Okay? <laughs> so, run your ad starting continuously. Optimization, you got all these options, but don't get confused. Just choose post engagement. Bidding amount, you can do automatic or manual. Do automatic. Automatic. You don't have to worry about figuring out how to bid and auctions and everything. Just let Facebook handle it. Okay. When you get charged, you know what? I'm not going to go through this. Leave everything the way it is. All I changed was $5 from your default set. Okay? Run it, run it, run it. Now, your ad set name. Um, a, good way to, a good way to name your ad set 
is the same name that you name your audience. So I have my audience name here, Modern Influencers 8.7 million. I can come down here to Ad Set and I can name it Modern Influencers 8.7 million. Now, are there better, better naming conventions? Yes, I can show you a lot of different styles. When I was with my uh, our Ecom Incubator students a couple weeks ago, I gave them a very detailed strategy that I currently use for all my tracking. That's way too advanced right now. That's why being part of the Ecom Incubator is very, very helpful. You're going to get some different cutting edge stuff. For now, stick simple. Stick very, very simple. Modern influencers, 8.7 million. It's an easy way for me to be able to look at this ad set and remember what I'm advertising to. Continue. All right, we've made it to number three, the actual ad. Now, I have the ability to be able to create a new ad or use an existing post. Both of these options are good, but since I'm trying to go through this very basic and very fast for people, it's always best to use an existing post. It's just going to be easy for you. You're not going to pull out your hair. It's going to be super simple. However, I, since I'm a teacher, I will show you really quick how you would create a new one in case you wanted to, but we're actually going to use an existing one. Create a new ad. If you want to create an ad from scratch, they give you four types here. A single image. This is an image post. You're going to have a picture of something with a description. If somebody clicks it, it's not going to go to a website. If somebody clicks an image, it's going to open the image up bigger. Okay? So if it doesn't go to a website, what's the benefit? You can use an image that's really stunning, and you can have a link in the description for people to click on. The benefit of an image is it is, it is uh, native to the Facebook advertising platform. One of the most popular things that people post on Facebook are images. If you have just gotten married, you're going to place an image of your wedding. If, you're, if you just had a baby, you're going to place an image of your baby. It's a very uh, common and expected thing. Because of that, as an advertiser, you want to fit in. Let's, let's explain this for a second. Let's dive into this. Okay. The best way I ever had advertising explained to me, where I had an aha moment and I got it, when I first started out, my ads weren't converting. And there's a lot of reasons why, but there's one major thing I had to change and it suddenly got me results. Now, the best way to explain this is this. When you go to a party, let's say you go to a pool party in your friend's backyard, okay? If you're going to a pool party in your friend's backyard in the summer, what would be good dress attire to go to a party like that? Shorts, what else? Flip-flops, a tank top. You call it like a, like a pool look, right? Like, so here's a question. If all of you, if this is a pool party right here, and everybody's out in the backyard throwing beach balls around, hanging out, music going, barbecue, food, getting sun. If I came through in a three-piece suit and was standing out there, would I stick out? I'd stick out. Would it be a little bit uncomfortable? You see this uh, Arizona weather, 110, 120 degrees, blazing down on me. Would it be a little awkward? Okay, I'm that awkward guy in the suit and tie. Would it be even more aw awkward if right in the middle of the party, if I said, hey, can I get everybody's attention real quick? Yep, the guy in the suit real quick. I got a whiteboard here, and I want to show you, I want to draw some circles because I got this opportunity where you guys can all get rich. Okay? If I did that right in the middle of a barbecue and everybody's having fun, everybody's partying, if I made them all stop so they could look at my pitch, did I just kill the fun? Yeah. Completely. Yeah. Did I, is everybody excited to listen to my pitch? No. What, what are they excited about? The food, the party. So instead, do the same situation over. If I came into the party and I was wearing shorts, flip-flops, a tank top, and I was having fun, and I brought with me an entire, you know, a huge uh, tray full of barbecued ribs for free for everybody. I sat down at the table and said, hey, free barbecue ribs on me. Is everybody excited? Absolutely, except for the vegans, right? Everybody's excited. Depend you got to know your party, right? Uh, yeah, you might get hit with a bat if you're at the wrong party. The point is, I could be the guy in the suit that sticks out like a sore thumb that wants to stop you from having fun and introduce you to whatever I think is important that makes me money, or I can go on into your environment right alongside with you and serve some value to you first. Okay? What if I came to the party and the part, I noticed there really wasn't any music? And I came and I got this whole DJ set up 
And I got a DJ in there. Me and my friend says, who wants some loud music in here? DJ, drop it. And then DJ Odie's up here on the turntable, spinning, doing all this kind of stuff. Suddenly the party's alive. And everybody go, and, and then the host of the party goes, hey, who loves the music? You guys give this guy Chris Record thanks. You guys grab his card on the way out. Do you see the difference? That's how you win friends and influence people. You don't do it by standing out like a sore thumb trying to pitch something that they're not even interested in. As simple as that was, when it came to Facebook advertising, we all know what I just told you. I don't think I just shocked anybody. But yet when it came to Facebook advertising, I was the guy in the three-piece suit pitching something completely opposite for what people were looking for. Wow. It didn't dawn on me until I thought about it in a story form, right? So the way that I understand native advertising, and of course this could be debated, but let's just simplify it. The way I understand it is fit into the environment you're in. Fit right in. Blend right in, okay? So you're mirroring, you're matching. If you're targeting an audience of people that like the Walking Dead TV show, for example, they like post-apocalyptic zombie type stuff, right? They like that kind of stuff. So if I was dressed in some outfit like that, or if the ad had something like that in it, it was a little more dark, maybe even a little like zombie-ish or post-apocalyptic or something like that, there's a perfect match. Do you see what I'm saying? Or if I'm targeting people who like baking and who love desserts and who love cupcakes, if I, if I create an ad that's like, hey, here's a, a nice little cupcake nozzle and make really nice icing decorations for your cupcakes, perfect match. It's the same concept. That's what advertising is. And if you are on a platform, be native to that platform. If you're on Instagram, when people go on Instagram, do they post text-only status updates on Instagram? No. That's not what you do on Instagram. If you're on Twitter, that's what you do. If you're on Instagram, what do you do there? What do you post on Instagram? Photos and videos. And are the, are, is there a certain size that most of these photos and videos are? Square. Yeah, squares. Square photos and square videos is the native use of that platform. If I want to go to the Instagram pool party, I'm not going to wear a three-piece suit. I'm going to fit in with the environment. I'm going to post. My ad is going to be a square image or a square video. It's going to make more sense that way. That's the concept. That's the native advertising explained. That's matching the advertising platform. Then on top of that, you have to also match the audience. The great example was, you're like, Chris, I got this. You roll in with a big old tray of barbecued ribs, you're wearing the flip-flops, wearing the shorts, but you forgot you were at a vegan party, right? That's where matching the audience is so important. Had you come in with vegan shish kebabs and it said they were vegan or gluten-free or whatever it was, and that was advertised, say, hey, who here is interested in vegan shish kebabs, handmade, right here, homegrown, out of my backyard, out of my garden, brought here for free. You're matching them so well. You're dressed in the environment. Your offer matches them. That's the core. I wanted to break from the technical details because I, I, I don't want to teach you something just to have you go there and pull your hair out and hit your head against the wall. Do you understand the concept of matching the environment? Okay. I know some of you might think this is super, super simple, but trust me, I was advanced and I was still getting it wrong. So I think it's never, it's never wrong to hear simplicity over and over and over again. So you have a single image post, you have a single video post, you have a slideshow, which is like taking images and putting them into a little video. Really cool for you guys to play with at some point. You have canvas, you have all these different ways you can do this. Once you choose one, like single image, you just add images. They have a stock image library. Um, we had an ad convert at like 250% using a stock image of a cup of coffee. So you never know, like... It's crazy, but I would say, generally speaking, um, only use stock images if, you, if the image has something that's going to really s speak to your core audience. Um, uh, and then you could always add your own images. Um, after you add an, add an image, you can choose text. You know, that's the description for the image. Okay, we're not going to do that, though. I'm going to show you something called using an existing post. Click. Now, when you choose use an existing post, what it's going to do is it's going to pull up all of your Facebook pages that you have. If you follow me, or if you followed me for any number of time, you know that I, I'm a believer in Facebook fan pages. They're free to create. You can create as many as you want. There's unlimited, and it takes a minute to create them. So why not have multiples? If I'm going to advertise to vegans, I'm not going to do it from Techademics fan page. I'm not going to do it from a handbag fan page. 
49ers for life. I'm not going to advertise to vegans from a 49ers football fan page. I'm going to advertise from a vegan fan page. Matching your party is also about having the fan page match the uh, ad that you're trying to do. We're not going to get advanced there. But if you just really quickly want to see how simple this is, if I wanted to do a vegan fan page, see this little plus button right next to the uh, fan page thing? Right here, create a new one, cause or community. Let's say vegan, uh, vegan for life, community. Upload a profile picture real quickly. Let's just type in vegan life or something like that. Go to images and let's just see, you know, I think therefore I am vegan. Save that. I just found one real quick. Vegan profile picture. And there we go. That's it. So real quick, just that's how simple it is. Create a page. Oh, it says the image is too small. Whatever. Um, let me go real quick. Dun, dun, dun. Let me try to find a picture that's a little bit better than that one. I've already committed this far. I have to do it. Always be the vegan you want to be. I'm just using a blank one for, this might be too, too small too. Save. If it's too small, I found myself in a, in a never-ending loop here of, um, ah, yes. And then, let's say instead of vegan for life, let's go, let's even just have more fun, like California vegans for life. Create the page. Always be vegan that you, always be the vegan that you wanted to meet before you were vegan yourself. Interesting. So what I did here was real quick, I just created a page called California Vegans for Life, and it has a little California profile picture. How long did that take me, even with messing up? A minute. It was free. It took a minute, and already green, it's standing out to the audience. California Vegans for Life, if I advertise right now to vegans who live in California, do you think this would stand out? See how simple that was? Match yourself to the surroundings. Now, I'm not going to use that page, though. I just wanted to show you. Let's use, in this example, let's just use my own fan page, Chris Record. So, once it connects to a fan page, it's also going to pull up uh, page posts. It's going to pull up a lot of posts here of a lot of different things that you can advertise. So, let's look at this. Of all these different posts, there's this live, it, that right now, that's actually live. There's day one, Technomics Grand Opening. There's this other live I did, another live. There's a lot of live streams here. Now, real quick, a quick note on live streams. You cannot advertise a live stream while it is live. Okay? You may not need that information today. It's going to be valuable information at some point. If a live stream is currently live, you cannot, Facebook will not let you advertise to it. Uh, otherwise, I would be advertising to it, and you would see like 25,000 people on live with us at a time. However, as soon as it's done, and it's now a recording, Facebook will let you advertise to it. Now, we do have people like Nicholas Kuzmich backstage, who is somehow like a mad genius, and he probably does know a way to do that. So, Nicholas, if you know, I'll hand you $1,000, and you can show me how. Um, but I don't know how. Um, so, you're going to go through and choose a post. You might have to scroll through a bunch of your old posts to find something that you want to advertise. So let's go through and let's advertise this one right here. Uh, that's a life of an entrepreneur music video drops on this date, whatever. Let's just do this one. Oh, let's do this one. Here's a sneak peek. Okay. So you go back and you choose a post. So it's going to give me a preview on the right of what my post looks like. Here is a sneak peek at my next rap music video called Life of an Entrepreneur, which drops April 20th, which is today after this talk, actually. And there it is, a video. Now, here's what's cool, is this ad preview doesn't just show you what it looks like on desktop newsfeed. You can click these little arrows here, and that's what it's going to look like on mobile, and that's what it's going to look like on a featured phone, a phone that's a different size phone. So, let's talk about mobile for a second. What, you, what happens when you make a post on Facebook? If you use too much text in your post, Facebook is going to truncate it, cut it off, and it's going to say read more. Click here to read more. Well, if a user ha can't see all the text and they click here to read more, they're engaging with your ad, but only just to see what it says. You can confuse Facebook that way. If you have a read more button, it can confuse Facebook because people are engaging, but they're not necessarily doing anything. They're not liking, sharing, commenting, anything. When possible, if you can fit your message in, if you can fit your message in without having to read more, I've split tested both. It works better for me. You can always test yourself. 
have a smaller, more clear, more concise description. So, what I did was I went to this page and I made a post. Here's how simple it is. You go to your fan page, let's go to Chris Record. Let's go over here to Chris Record. Um, and we'll just go to one of my fan pages. Okay, here's a fan page. So it's got 95,000 likes, which by the way, I'm about to show you in a minute, just as a quick little um, tidbit, something to look forward to. Would anybody be interested in this room, would anybody be interested in learning how to build your own branded fan page and grow at 10,000 new likes per week? Yeah? Okay, a lot of hands? Okay, if we have time, maybe not this talk, but I'll ask Peter, if we have time, I'll come out and show you exactly that. This fan page is on a brand new strategy. It's growing at 10,000 real fans per week right now on autopilot. Like last month, it was at like 50,000 or something like that. And it's already at almost 100,000. Pretty crazy how fast that happens. So let's go here. Let's click this fan page. Okay. So here we are on this fan page. Okay. Um, real quick, when you're an admin of a fan page, you're going to see a link up here on the top that says go to business manager. This is new with Facebook you have to click this. Otherwise, I'm posting, if you look at the top right up there, notice there's a different profile picture than this one here on the left. This is my fan page, and that's my personal profile on Facebook. I have a personal profile, and I have a fan page. Well, right now, if I interact on this page, I'm interacting as my personal profile, posting as Chris Record on my personal profile. So, if I want to administrate this page as the admin, I go here, business manager. Now I'm interacting on this page as the page. It's important to know. Let me show you an illustration of why that's important. It's one of those little tidbits. Write something. Hey, this page is cool. Okay, there's a post. It's going to go to all my 90,000 fans, right? Post. Nope. The people who manage this page will, will moderate that soon for you. I'm the manager. Why did it say that? Does anybody know? Why didn't that post get approved? Because, yeah, because I'm posting from a Chris Record personal account, not from the fan page. So, if I go here to Business Manager and do the same exact thing, hey, this page is cool, publish, boom, it went right there on the page. It's instantly there. The reason it's instantly there is because the, if I want to manage the page, I have to log in like I did. I have to click that link on the top. Now I'm managing the page. If anybody here ever gets confused, that is a reason why. Okay. Um, I'm going to delete this real quick. Even though it might have worked. You never know. It's always be testing. Like, one, like I'll, if you guys watch me train, I'll forget stuff all the time. And people will be like, hey, that one viral video you promoted, you know, I was looking at it. It's done pretty well. I'm like, which one? And they'll go, Oh, you posted some martial arts videos, some guy doing nunchuck techniques. I'm like, really? I go look at it, it has 4.5 million views. <laughs> I just forgot about it. <laughs> no link, no anything. It's crazy. So you never know what works. Um, so I'm here on the page. So if I want to advertise something, all I do is I come here and make a post about it. That's how simple it is to advertise. You just come and you make a post. So if I want to advertise a video, all I got to do is upload a video just like this. Upload it right there. I could upload a video. Okay? Um, if I want to um, do text, I just write text in. If I want to do a picture, same thing. Upload a picture. Now, so that's how easy it is. You create a text. You create a post. Once you create a post, it'll show up over here in the drop-down menu. It'll show up right there. Okay. So, going back to this idea of mobile. Not only did I keep my, my description short enough where it all fit in, but did you notice that I used emojis? Here's the thing about using emojis. Use whatever you can to make your post stand out to people. That's all you're looking to do, stand out. But don't overdo it. Don't throw 30 emojis in there, you know, unless you're tailing to like 13-year-olds with your ad. <laughs> don't go overboard. Be subtle, but find ways to stand out, okay? Now, if you want a quick trick on how to find emojis, just go to Google and type in keyboard emojis. There's, a, there's a, a link here, emojikeyboard.org, this first one. Let's click on that. They got all these like emojis here that you can copy. So if I want to put an emoji in my post, I could look through this list. But they have all these categories. Here's the top ones, smileys and people. Um, 
objects, nature, symbols. Here's recents. So here's a lot of ones that I, I use in my marketing, my advertising. This little fire. This fire is pretty good, copied. So you see it's like right there. So I can copy this little fire. So if I go over to my fan page, look at that, I just put three fires in there. Um, three fires. Who's interested in learning advanced Facebook ads? Okay, publish. Now look at how this post looks. Okay? Do you see how that, how that can pop in your newsfeed a little bit more? Do you see it? A little cartoonish, but emojis are generally widely accepted now. I didn't overdo it because I used the same emoji. Now, let's do the same post, but let's do it with a few more emojis. Let's go, let's, let's not only use the, that one, but let's also use the dollar sign because, you know, we're going to make money. Watch, let's do it again. Uh, you know, who wants to make mon mon money, comma. Now let's go grab some more because emojis are fun, right? And let's show you what not to do. Who wants to make money? This person. Whoops, clicked an ad. This lady does. Okay. Who wants to make money? There's a guy. It went to a guy. I copied the lady. I'm not going to argue with it. I copied this lady and it turned into a guy. Oh, here's another dollar. It's changing on me. And then go like this. This guy does. Who wants to make money? This guy does. And then let's... You know, now that we're at it, I mean, I love money. Let me put this one here. Love, love, love. Okay. You'll see what I'm saying and you'll realize who wants money? This guy does. If you love making money, oh yeah, then do something like, cat. you know, people do stuff like that. If you love making money, then contact me here. And then... And then let's put like what people do wrong is they'll put some crazy long link like this. Doop, just that little link. Just contact me at that little link. <laughs> and then, of course, you're not done with emojis yet. You got to do the 100 emoji. And then also like, you're like, oh my God, what if people don't know that it's available internationally? You know, we could fix that. Flags. Okay, it's also in Germany. And see what people do? I kid you not, we're in Germany, and they're like, well, hold on, we're actually in five countries. Let me put these all. And what happens is, it's really cool, right? And you just do that. You publish. Well, what happens is, people do this all the time. Okay? It becomes, it gets lost. Even though they're making great use of emojis and stuff like that, it's getting lost. They're having fun with it, it's getting lost. Versus something a little cleaner. So, Use emojis, but use them sparingly. Use them in a way that are only adding value to the post and not going crazy with it. If you can keep your post short like this, Facebook will make it big letters. If your post gets longer, they make them smaller letters, and they'll even cut off links and stuff like that. Use short links. Use brief descriptions. Use emojis when they're needed. Use them sparingly. And... When you have a call to action, make sure it looks good. So an example is, let's, let's, let's link to this page here. Let's say I want them to go to this website. Boom. Emoji keyboard. Okay? Here's a post. Emoji keyboard. And see how this post comes up with like a little square there? A text, a description? This can look a lot better. So instead of like emoji keyboard, Watch, let's say, let's say best emojis. Instead of emoji keyboard, let's just take this Huffington Post one. And let's post that one instead. Same, same thing, same kind of an article. And look how it comes up with the big poop. <laughs> Sorry, the chocolate uh, ice cream Sunday. Do you see how it's a big image? Or if I go to the next one down, and this is, this is, in, this is important. Here's trending. Let's grab one of these. Oh, it's all political stuff. I'm already ruining my face. My, why did I choose the 100,000 fan, fan page to post a lot of stuff to? Um, let's see this one. Best and worst. Let's go. Let's end this post. Exit. Let's go here to this one. Best and worst. So do you see how this is bigger? See how it's a big picture? Okay? Do you guys see that? What happens is when you post a link, it auto-populates. Okay? 
Here is a big key for you. This is how you make your post. Okay? So watch this. Let's go back to this emoji thing. Let's use that little fire, something like that. What happens if I click in this title? It's editable. Right down the post, watch this. Fire. Here are the top 10 best emojis that convert. And then use like one more, and then we'll use this 100 one. This is how you can literally. Now you see how that looks? Here are the top 10 best emojis that convert. You fit it in, you got some emojis in it, and then these emojis to use when you avoid. So you got, you got your post, you got your link, it's going to your link, you've got a picture, you've got a title, you can change the description by clicking in here. You know,、um, if you use Facebook ads for business, here are the top. Emojis to use. Okay? Click off. There it is. And then what you do is you can come up here. Now that you've pasted your link in, you don't need it anymore. It auto populated. Now you can make a beautiful description. And the beautiful description could say something like、um, you know, if you are an entrepreneur, you should consider using emojis. In your post, in your Facebook posts. But don't make these big mistakes, okay? And then you got a link clicking, okay? So, you know, like let's say tag an entrepreneur friend who needs to see this post, okay? Now you give them the call to action to tag a friend. They got a link here, this and that. So let's click post. Now, look how this looks. It's a lot cleaner. See how this looks? Chris Record, it's got the big image. If you're an entrepreneur, you should consider doing this. Tag an entrepreneur friend. You got the link. Click it. It goes to the website you're trying to advertise. You're set. It looks clean. It's got everything you're looking for. This is how you do it professionally. And once you make a post, all you do is you come over here to your fan page. Let's go to another one real quick. Hold on. Chris Record. And, oh, let's go off of it really quick. Chris Record, let's go back to another fan page. And let's go back to it. Give it time to refresh for a second. I might have to refresh. Control R. When I refresh now, this post should be available. Continue. Chris Record, there it is. Who's interested in learning advanced Facebook ads live now? They're starting to come up. I don't know. It hasn't come up, but they're starting to come up. I give it a second, it'll come up. I just made it. Now you have it as a post. So if you post on your fan page, you're going to be able to choose it from here. That's how this is going to work. So when you're placing Facebook ads as a beginner, you're going to go in, you're going to create an audience, you're going to select an existing post. If you don't have one, go make one. If you don't have a fan page, make one. That's all that you need, and then you're ready to do it.、Okay? That's what I want to show you. I'm going to wrap up. Because I, I know we have another speaker here coming in a second. I want to wrap up with showing you how to publish it. So let's go back to this video. There's my video. It looks good. It's got emojis. And then I just place an order. When you place an order, you now have an order has been placed. Your order is in review, and soon it will be approved. Okay? It's going to take probably on average like 10 minutes to be reviewed to 30 minutes. Then it'll start going. I place it for $5 a day. It'll take a whole day for that to, to get used. The first day, the stats are generally not going to be that good. The stats start getting better the second and the third day. Now, in, see if I can do this in two minutes for you, and then I'll set up another session afterwards if you want to learn more. What you do after you have a post that you've placed, if it's going well, you go from Ads Manager over to Power Editor. You're going to click on this, and then inside of your Power Editor, you're going to go here to the plus symbol. Campaign name. So I hit plus symbol campaign name equals and whatever the video is you're advertising. LOE video. All I do is hit the plus symbol, chose campaign name, LOE video. See, and it's going to pull up all the ads I have with LOE video. If I want to duplicate this, watch how simple this is. Check the box, hit duplicate. Number of duplicates? One, create. Now, I've duplicated it. It's not going to go live until I review changes up on the top. But that's it. I've duplicated it. 
Okay? So, all I have to do now is instead of modern influencers, let's do real quick book authors. That's the campaign name, book authors. See it right there? Book authors. Now, let's go to ad sets. And instead of being modern influencers, let's edit that. Let's call this book authors. Now, let's go down here. Let's go down and find my little audience. Oh, here's all these people that are modern influencers. Let's X. They're all gone. And let's choose some book authors. You guys, n fire out some authors of entrepreneur-related books. Kiyosaki. Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki. And look what's already happening. Napoleon Hill, Jim Rohn, Zig Ziglar, Dale Carnegie, John Maxwell, Stephen Covey. See this? I don't have to really work that hard. It's all here. Okay? You do the same thing. You get your new audience. There's five million people. You got your exact new audience, but this one is called Book Authors. And then you put how big the title is. Book Authors, and this one is 4.9 million. Okay. And that's it. My ad set is called Book Authors. My campaign name is called Book Authors. So what I did was I duplicated the whole thing. LOE Video Book Authors and Book Authors, 4.9 million. I go and I review changes and I apply. I had some other stuff that were um, in there. It should say three. I just replied nine. I don't even know what I just approved. <laughs> One more time and then we can wrap it up. One more. Let's unselect everything. Okay. If I want to change this, if I want to duplicate this again, instead of Book Authors, Check this, press duplicate, create. Now, instead of book authors, let's go after people that are in MLM companies. MLM companies. That's the, ad, that's the campaign name. Boom, now it's different. Let's go over to the ad set. Let's edit the ad set. And on the top, we're going to do MLM companies. Let's scroll down and let's change it from book authors, right here, X them all out. And let's type in, name an MLM company, a multi-level marketing company. Amway. 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 Interest. Make sure you're only choosing interests. Then it just shows you Herbalife, New Skin, Usana, Isogenics, Narium, whatever, all these. Three million people right there. So you add in a bunch, MLM companies, three million. Just like that. That's it. Now you have this ad set, MLM companies, three million. MLM companies, review changes, apply. And you just can keep doing this all you want. These are $5 per day campaigns. You can go in here. If you have a big one like Modern Influencers, let's duplicate this one again. Duplicate. And let's do Modern Influencers, let's keep it, women. This is again, I'm going to target women. Let's go over to Ad Sets, edit the Ad Set. Everything's exactly the same except all I'm going to change on this one is women. And then right now, it's going to give me a new estimated daily result, 4.6 million. So instead of 8.7 million, let's do modern Im influencers women, 4.6 million. And that's it. Let's review those changes and go. Here's the point, and let me wrap up with this. I can do this over and over and over and over again. If I want to spend $100 today to buy views for my video, what I would do is I would duplicate that $5 campaign 20 times. Each time, I would slightly adjust the ad set, but I would make sure it's between 1 and 10 million people. If I'm going to go Modern Influencers Women, great. I'll do another one Modern Influencers Men, great. Is it still between 1 to 10 million people? I will let it go for one day. I've now spent $100, and I've gotten a certain amount of views. After the day, I'm going to go look at the cost, and it's going to tell me how much is the cost per result, cost per engagement. If the cost is over two cents, then I'm going to pause it, and I'm not going to spend a single dime. If it's a penny, maybe I'll keep it, maybe I won't. If it's less than a penny, I'll keep it. What I'll do is I'll place 20 ads, let's say half of them are performing well and half of them aren't. All I'm going to do is go click this little blue button right here, status, deactivate, review, and apply. That's it. And I just deactivated it. If it wasn't performing well, I deactivate it. You guys, this is how simple Facebook advertising can be. You go make a post on a fan page, you choose an audience to advertise it to, $5 a day, you name it, make sure it's good, and you go. Start with page post engagement so you can get your feet wet. Once you feel that you can get your feet wet, come back in and you can do conversion ads. 
and start selling products and services. But you've got to start somewhere. Until you can figure out how to get video views for a penny or less, it's going to be hard to do anything else. Start with the basics and go from there. Hopefully this touch up refresher course on Facebook advertising was helpful to you guys. I want to turn the stage over because we have much more talented, much more successful advertisers than little old me. But I can get videos in the millions of views using this exact strategy. So hopefully it was helpful. Thank you all for your time. Appreciate it. Awesome guys. Give Chris Record a huge round of applause. So what we're going to do right now is three